Hello friends, welcome again to Intellect Medigos, where learning is made easy. If you haven't subscribed the channel, do hit the subscribe button below and also tap on the bell button to get the updates about my new video. So today we'll discuss about asthma. It is defined as a common chronic disorder of the airways that is complex and characterized by variable and recurring symptoms, airflow obstruction, bronchial hyperresponsiveness, and an underlying inflammation. The interaction of these features of asthma determines the clinical manifestations and severity of asthma as well as the response to treatment. Now, how a patient of asthma presents with? <coughs> So that is a cough, often worse at night. Second, wheeze. Just listen this wheezing sound. So it is a high pitched whistling sound, usually upon exhalation, and also can present with shortness of breath or difficulty breathing. Physical findings that suggest severe airflow obstruction and asthma include. Tachycardia, which is increased heart rate, tachypnea, which is increased respiratory rate, prolonged expiratory phase of respiration, that is decreased IE ratio, and seated position with use of extended arms to support the upper chest, which is usually the tripod position, use of accessory muscles of breathing during inspiration, and a pulsus paradoxus, which is greater than 10 mmHg fall in systolic blood pressure during inspiration. These two last are usually found during severe asthmatic attacks. Now the pathophysiology of asthma, which is quite complex. In this pic, this is the trachea of the patient which divides into right and left bronchus and then into bronchioles. On the left side, this is the normal airway, whereas on the right side, you can see the increased smooth muscle along with increased mucus inside the airway which has caused the narrowing of the airway lumen, thereby responsible for all the signs and symptoms of asthma. This is how an asthmatic airway looks like. Now let's understand with the help of this dynamic short video of the airway. When an allergen goes into the trachea, smooth muscle contracts as you can see in the video and on continued exposure of allergen to its walls, it contracts further along with increased mucus production which you can see in green color, further causing narrowing of the airway passage and ultimately leading to collapse. Now let's discuss how and which cells are primarily involved in allergic airway inflammation. When an allergen enters into the body, it initiates cascade of reactions, causing activation of Th2 cells and mast cells. Th2 cells release a family of cytokines like IL-4, IL-5 which causes IgE production and these IgE antibodies they get attached to mast cells causing degranulation and release of mediators from mast cells that includes histamine, leukotrienes and prostaglandins that directly contract airway smooth muscle causing bronchoconstriction. Now the etiology factors that can contribute to asthma or airway hyperactivity may include environmental allergens like house dust mites, animal allergens especially cat and dog, environmental pollutants, tobacco smoke, exercise, aspirin or NSAID hypersensitivity, viral respiratory tract infections. Diagnosis. It is based on first and foremost is the history, then the clinical features, third is laboratory investigation. The laboratory evaluation of a patient with suspected asthma is predominantly focused on pulmonary function testing. Most important of PFTs is spirometry in which a patient is asked to breathe in and breathe out through a mouthpiece and the amount of air inhaled and exhaled is recorded. It also includes measurement of forced expiratory volume in one second that is FEV1 and forced vital capacity FVC which is the volume of air that can be forcibly be blown out after the full inspiration. When the ratio of FEV1 by FVC is less than 0.7, it indicates obstructive disease like asthma. Fourth point which helps in diagnosis is bronchodilator response. Acute reversibility of airway obstruction is tested by administering 
two to four puffs of quick acting bronchodilator like albuterol and repeating spirometry 10 to 15 minutes later on. An increase in FEV1 of 12% or more accompanied by an absolute increase in FEV1 of at least 200 ml can be attributed to bronchodilator responsiveness with 95% certainty of asthma. Other tests which help in diagnosis are peak expiratory flow, exhaled nitric oxide and eosinophilia in the blood test. Now coming on to the most important topic that is asthma management. This is guided by GINA, G-I-N-A, that is Global Initiative for Asthma. Routine assessment of symptoms and lung function should be done. Patient education and preference. Controlling environmental factors or trigger factors and comorbid conditions that contribute to asthma severity. Pharmacological and non-pharmacological therapy. Adjust the treatment. Review response in form of symptoms, exacerbation, side effects, patient satisfaction and lung function. Pharmacological therapy is the mainstay of management in most, uh, most patients with asthma. This is also guided by the stepwise approach given by GINA, GINA, Global Initiative for Asthma. There are five steps which are based on frequency of asthma symptoms or frequency of short acting beta agonist use with or without risk, risk factors for exacerbation. As you can see these five steps, step one is symptoms less than twice a month without a risk factor. Step two can be twice a month but without risk factors or less than twice a month having a risk factor. Step three, twice a month and having a risk factor. Step four, troublesome asthma symptoms most of the days along with a risk factor. And step five is initial presentation with severely uncontrolled asthma or an asthma exacerbation with a risk factor present. Now, if the patient is on step one, then the reliever medication in the form of Saba or short acting beta agonist is the preferred option and there is no need for any control medication. In step two, low dose ICS or inhaled corticosteroid is the preferred controller choice. Other options are leukotriene receptor antagonist along with low dose theophylline. In step three to five, reliever medication can be either Saba or low dose ICS. Whereas LABA, that is long acting beta agonist, can be used as a controller choice in both step 3 as well as in step 4. In step 5, add on treatment like tiotropium, anti IgE, anti IL5 can be used as preferred controller choice and low dose oral corticosteroids can be tried. Now, talking about the new modalities for patients whose asthma is inadequately control and high dose inhaled glucocorticoids and LABA, the anti-IgE therapy that is omalizumab may be considered if there is objective evidence of sensitivity to a perennial allergen and if serum IgE level is within the established target range. Monoclonal antibodies like mepolizumab and reslizumab against IL-5, a potent chemoattractant for eosinophils. They are indicated for treatment with severe eosinophilic asthma poorly controlled with conventional therapy. A new modality is bronchial, uh, bronchial thermoplasty. It is a device based intervention available to treat severe asthma utilizing a special catheter introduced via fiber optic bronchoscope. Thermal energy is applied to the bronchial walls in an effort to impair bronchial smooth muscle contractility. The role of bronchial thermoplasty in managing severe asthma is still not clear. So that was all about asthma. Please feel free to ask any question or your feedback in the comment section below. If you like the content and presentation of this video, please press the like button and share with your friends. And please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and tap on the bell icon to get the updates about my new video. Thank you guys. Thanks a lot.